morning. Good Monday morning to you, my DBS family. How are you guys doing? It was quite a jam-packed weekend. By now, we would have known who captured the uh, the, the Soka Monarch title and the Groovy Monarch title. Um, but we're going to give you that in a later date. We're going we're gonna to celebrate that in a later date. Let's go on over to our news uh, desk, see what Kendall has for us, and then we'll be right back. A good morning. Wasco can manage its water much better. That is the view of the Infrastructure Minister Stevenson King on the water and sewage company's management of its water resources. He has highlighted the need for innovative solutions to be undertaken by the water company to address the country's water supply issues. Recently I met with Wasco on the heels of the dry season and the problems which the country seemed to have been experiencing at the time in terms of supply of water. And whereas I'm of the firm view that notwithstanding the, the reduction in water storage during the dry season, I am of the view that Wasco can manage its resources much better. But more than that, the problem we have is the, our inability to improve our water storage capacity on the island. We have a tremendous amount, we should have rather, a tremendous amount of capacity at the John Compton Dam. But the John Compton Dam has been silted for many years, reducing the capacity to probably 10%. The last administration undertook to desilt the dam, but was able to achieve less than 10% in, in that exercise, which cost the government $60 million. The nation's drinking water infrastructure system forms an integral part of the government's Infrastructure 2030 plan. Infrastructure 2030 presents a vision for the upgrade, redevelopment and expansion of St. Lucia's infrastructure into the year 2030, coinciding with commitments to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. In other news, a group of visually impaired individuals have graduated from a Japanese traditional massage therapy course. The drive by the St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association is that people living with blindness and vision impairment must do two things. Must be given opportunity to, for self-development as well as opportunity to contribute to the continuing development of their society. Which means that, ladies and gentlemen, the impact has to be felt not only in the, in the education space, not only in the, the social development, but also in the ec economic side of things, which means that the various environment must be transformed to providing the necessary accommodation so that its citizens can shoulder the responsibilities as well as enjoying the, so the social goods. The course is a collaboration between the St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association and the Japanese International Cooperation Agency, or JICA. The Sufre Regional Development Foundation, the SRDF, continues to invest in the growth of the people of Sufre. The organization's annual scholarship and book bursary program for 2024 has been officially launched. We want to ensure that as many people as possible are able to apply for the program. Uh, we always ensure that we recognize the hard work of top performers in the district, but also these bursaries, the book donations, they're also given out based on need. And so we want every family that is in need of this kind of support from the SRDF to have an opportunity to apply. So we're going to roll out earlier this year and we hope that we can have more applications this year to ensure that we touch the lives of as many families as possible, give young people an opportunity to pursue their educational goals. In other news, targeted efforts to build resilient communities through the empowerment of young people in the Eastern Caribbean birthed the Ignite or Learning Business by Doing Business project. In the first phase called the Getting Ready phase, participants engaged in soft or essential skills, academic and technical and vocational training aimed at preparing them for phase two, which leads them to one of the three pathways, internship, entrepreneurship, or continued education. 48 St. Lucians completed their first steps in a journey guided by that program. These are your top stories. Thanks for watching. Good morning. 
Thank you, Kendall. We need to take a short break. We come right back. promise you the last time we spoke to a rep from Grenada um, that we were going to be touching base again after um, a few of our con counterparts went over to Kyaria Koo um, to give us more, uh, you know, a, on a real feel of what the people of, of, of Kyaria Koo and P.T. Martinique were actually experiencing after the passing of Beryl. And we caught up with Calista Faria. Um, she was kind enough to, um, you know, join us on a Zoom call and give us an update because she was actually on the ground. I'm here with a colleague, a, a very senior professional, absolutely admirable. I don't know if she knows I admire her. Um, a journalist from back home, Calistra Faria. Um, Calistra, I am so honored that you are able to join us. Um, you are actually on the ground in Kariaku right now. Um, you made that, that, that journey up there, as you would have, of course, um, to follow up on what is going on. What can you say to us? How are you doing, by the way? How is everything okay with you and your family? Oh, we we're, were fine. I did I come back down from Caribou. I'm actually getting ready to uh, return to Caribou. I don't need to be all tomorrow at the cover. And of course, I am I was and both last night. No, I don't. I can join the volunteer team to just help with some stuff while I'm up there. But yeah, we, you know, on the mainland, uh, we did not have any severe damage in St. George's. Uh, the, the, the damage on the mainland was to some extent in St. In, in St. John. Um, in the hilly areas, and Sima, sorry, the, the Sima, and then St. Patrick, and uh, parts of St. Andrew and St. David, the eastern and northern parts could be hit on the mainland of agriculture, and millions, tens of millions of dollars uh, in damage uh, in that section. But of course, in Caribou, it is uh, a disaster area, um, total and completely. Um, devastated by the hurricane. You've seen the pictures, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of uh, footage coming out of Carrefour and uh, Peter Martin. Yeah. But uh, to be there, to be among the rubble, it gives you the idea of the sheer uh, force of Hurricane Beryl as she swept over those two islands, Carrefour, 15 square miles, and uh, 10,000 people on there, 900 people on Peter Martin, and that's how small that island is. Um, and uh, it's coupled with the faces of the people, because when you're there, you see the people in the devastation, people who have lost, in some cases, everything, and it really hits home uh, and takes us right back to Ivan 20 years ago. Right. We, we, we went through that. We went through that on, uh, here in Grenada. Yes, uh, yes. 20 years ago. So it's, it, it was really moving, you know, I, it was a... Uh, uh, a strange experience for me, just almost feeling like I was taken back 20 years ago. But my, in my opinion, Karaku is uh, even worse than, than the mainland was back then. Yes, yes I was and, um, hearing someone yeah. was, was saying that as well. They said that, you know what, it, you know, they did Ivan, but, but somehow, because of the, you know, Karaku is so small, and, 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 and you could practically just pan the entire um, 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 little island uh, and just to see the, the, the destruction. Now you, Calistra, you had, you had um, well, the unfortunate or fortunate opportunity to have tapped in right after um, the passage. So you, you got there when people were already in, you, you got the real true sense of the emotions on the ground at that time because you, you were there the morning um, um, after, um, and you would have gotten a, a, a sense um, in terms of the, 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 the brokenness of the people maybe some still in shock um i could only imagine um what it would have felt like on the ground in in, in that moment and you had the opportunity to experience that can you tell us in terms of the emotions of the people right after that how how, how it was going for them but well, people were very emotional as to be expected um i, I saw the loss in people's eyes uh, there were people were smiling there were people some people who were smiling, uh, but when you looked at them, you could see that uh, those are not people who were happy that uh, they had been uh, through a trauma. As people recounted, um, oh, the wind blew out my windows and my doors, or it blew out my roof, and I had to head downstairs. Uh, 
One woman who I spoke to spoke about having to hide in a cupboard, and as she was in this cupboard, other people started coming into uh, the house that she was in, including elderly people, because they could not see where they were. Uh, Beryl had that little bit of roof and, and the doors and windows, and uh, it was, you, you could tell people was even broken. This is this gentleman that I know personally in Carol, who always had you, always up, he's always glad to see me. And when he saw me, he was glad to see me. But I could feel, I, I could feel that his spirit had gone down a few notches as I spoke to him. Right. And you know, the people that I knew up there, the most I could have done was, you know, I did bring some water up um, to Carol, but at that, in that moment, all I could offer was, you know, a hug. And you know, it's, it's going to be okay. But we will rebuild. That's that's what we do. Yeah. And as Caribbean people and the Indians in particular, we, 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 we pick up pieces. But in that uh, first 24 hours, it was just you know sadness. Another guy recounted to me he lost his boat. So he is uh, he, he works the boat. He lost his home. He lost his vehicle. So everything wow. gone. Um, and and so they. they it's going to take a while for them to get over just the, 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 the loss of everything, and it's going to take a while for them to rebuild. I think maybe they will rebuild the infrastructure faster than they will rebuild their souls, because Ivan Berezari was, was, was such a vicious uh, hurricane. What, what, in terms of the toll in numbers, um, casualties of deaths, um, there's been some conflicting ones on over on our side. Was, is there a confirmed number? Well, so far, what I have confirmed from the officials is four deaths in total from the passenger party in Bella. One on the mainland, a uh, gentleman, a tree fell on his house in the river road, mm -hmm. and uh, he died. And then in the early stages, I think within the first 24 hours of uh, Bella in Caracol, there were two confirmed. And then a uh, day before, as they were going through and checking homes, as you do after a disaster and doing the assessment, they found another gentleman who was helping someone and uh, something fell on him and he lost his life as well. Wow. So it's four confirmed that, that I have so far. Wow. I'm not sure, you know, as they continue to check homes. And so, you know, we hope that the number does not increase. But well, it's well, have four, yeah. Thank you very much. And have an awesome weekend. As awesome as it could be. You. <laughs> Friday, the Venezuelans um, celebrated their independence and we had a chat with uh, the ambassador right here in St. Lucia. I'm here with the Venezuelan ambassador in St. Lucia, Leif Escalona. 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 I got it. I, at least I got something there. Happy independence. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. And we, caught, we normally refer to here as a forgotten park, but I recently got a full history um, from um, Margot Thomas as to the significance of uh, these two busts that are stationed right here and to the significance of the persons who they represent. Uh, and so you chose to, to do a little celebration here. You hear it's independence. Um, tell me what's going on. Well, today, as I mentioned in my speech, today we commemorate 213 years of our independence. It was the day when it was the sign of the Declaration of independence and we started a long process but just um, we invited the musician from San Lucia the drummers because they recently traveled to Venezuela and they had a wonderful experience there it was in June just a few weeks ago and they are very happy to share with us our origin our culture from Africa from indigenous you know and today is a very special day for us because we have um, uh, an important process, not only from the past. We are still doing constantly. We are fighting for our independence, our real independence. As um, right now, Venezuela is a, a nation that is is very is very. Um, 
important in our region because we are we at the same time when we got our independence different countries like Bolivia, Ecuador, Peru, Venezuela, the five of, was liberated was at the same process. But it wasn't no, wasn't easy. It was years, more than 20 years in different battles, but we got the good the good freedom and we have to defend all the time and we are working on that and in this particular moment in Venezuela we are very proud of our new schemes that we established with other nations other sister and brother uh, people of the different countries like ALBA the Alliance Bolivarian, Bolivarian Alliance of, of our people of our America and we are looking for to establish the best ties and uh, to strengthen this relationship. Now, we know that St. Lucia and, and Venezuela has got a wonderful, well, for, for many years, has had a really wonderful tie through these gentlemen right here that we are now, you know, we now can see erected in this park. Um, speak to the significance of going forward, you know, you know, you speak about the ties and creating and, and strengthening those bonds. What are some of the future plans that Venezuela see itself, you know, you know, bonding with St. Lucia on? Well, we have many, many ties from long time ago, but as you know, Venezuela established the, uh, the embassy, the diplomatic mission in St. Lucia in 1979. The same year when San Lucia was in the, uh, had the independence. From that time, we started with a different plans like um, languages, uh, um, the Spanish classes for free. And the idea is to start again with this kind of program. But we are, because the embassy was closed for three years and we reopened recently in 2022. And we are trying to get to, to rescue a lot of things that we had before. And of course, in terms of uh, education, in terms of um, tourism, in terms of exchange, a different, um, the different, uh, the commerce, and a, a lot of economic areas we are looking for develop together, and we are we are in this. But and right now, as uh, as our commemoration today is the independence of Venezuela, we are doing the. Um, we are we are trying to establish the cultural exchange with the the people w between our countries because it's it's very very important. Absolutely. Yes. And how vital it is to have had the drummers who was recently over in Venezuela performing yes. and they volunteered. I heard to make sure that they yes, will perform here exactly. today on your independence. That's they, they amazing. They asked me for that. Yes. Oh. They asked me for that and I said, of course, why not? At the Absolutely. end of our our very short ceremony, it will be a. a, a it's a pleasure to, yes, yes. to hear this kind of music because it's the same. We have the same roots, the same. Yes, yes. absolutely. Um, Ambassador, you are amazing. And we want to take the opportunity here from the DBS family to Great. wish you and the people of Venezuela happy independence. Thank you. Thank you very much. Also, I would like to explain to you that we have um, you asked me about the, the what is the next program yes. or the next contribution. We are trying to get the good, good um, support from our national system of orchestras in Venezuela with the system, well, no, with the orchestras in San Lucia. You have different musicians. You have a lot of talent in San Lucia. The young people has a wonderful future in the different areas, like a choir and different instruments that some of them are playing right now. And the idea is to consolidate this kind of experience to support with the different um, uh, academic programs that we have in Venezuela very well. And we started also a few weeks ago in the in the month of Ma, in the in May and June, we invited some musicians from San Lucia. They went to Venezuela. They got a wonderful program there for one week and for three weeks. No, two weeks. Um, the choir teachers, violin teachers, they went to Venezuela. I will. I would like to to show you maybe in, in a few months Absolutely. the result of this kind of cooperation. Absolutely. Well, we are welcome. We are here for it all.
everyone and welcome to this morning's Soka Size session. Leading the wine, we have Suzanne from Studio Fit and Healthy 911 and myself, Shani, from Soka Size St. Lucia. Let's get ready to flaunt with Soka Size. This morning's workout is a wine and tone routine to send it up by spice. Let's go. It's DJ Pop. Switch. Hey. And I want that core moving. Shake the hips side to side. Hit. 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 Pop. Hey. Hey. Shake the hips. Now we're going side, cross it. You really want to cross it. Four, three, two, hit. Hit, hit, hit. Punch. Hey. Nice and strong. Three. Hit it. Hit, hit. hit. Wind it round. Wind. That was this morning's session. We hope you are feeling sexy, sultry, and strong. Do remember to flaunt today. Well, that's our show for this Monday. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, tonight is going to be the king and queen of the band. It's absolutely free over on the Sab. So go on out and take in some of our creativity. I, I know that, you know, the creative men and women were working over time so hard for the past couple of months, and it would be nice to see what they have come up with. So that is on tonight. So if you're looking for something to do, go on out. But remember, we are still promoting responsible enjoyment. I'll see you tomorrow.